Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So I decided to make this video in front of some of the other videos that I was about to make uh, because I've been getting a few comments lately. This guy on Instagram said, oh, which HVLP spray gun should I get? <clears throat> and then literally just before I was walking, I was walking out halfway through editing this video, I went out to grab a drink and I quick check on the comments and someone, uh, he said, oh, I'm a cabinet sprayer and I'm gonna go and get myself a HVLP spray gun to paint my car, you know, wish me luck or something like that. And I'm like, man, I need to make this video. So I understand that a lot of people that watch my videos aren't tradesmen sprayers or, you know, spray painters. So they might just see HVLP and think, that's the newest technology, that's the best gun that I can get, you know. So they'll go out looking for a HVLP spray gun. But honestly, for DIY people, anyone at home, don't get a HVLP spray gun. You're doing yourself no favors at all. You're just gonna set yourself up for a few issues. So we'll have to first explain what a HVLP spray gun is compared to a standard spray gun. So all it actually means, and it's referring to these air horns. So I've got a couple of spray guns here. Yeah, that one's getting a bit old. That's actually the first spray gun I ever owned. And it wasn't a HVLP spray gun. And I'm a uh, tradesman sprayer now. So, um, you know, we, we don't need them. We don't need a HVLP spray gun to spray with. So here's a starter jet here. So what these are called here on the side of each spray gun, they're called air horns, right? Now, in here, this is where the air comes out, the side of here and here, right? It, it then, it then they meet together at the front, creating a fan, right? Now, on a HVLP spray gun, I actually don't have a HVLP cap here at home. I've got them at work, but you don't, you don't need me to have one here. Now, on a HVLP spray gun, these holes here are much bigger. If you get, if you get side by side, and I have done this in a few videos before, but I understand that not all my subscribers have seen all my videos. So I do recommend I'll be linking a few uh, separate videos that maybe go a little bit further into detail um, to help you understand what HVLP is. But basically, it's to do with the size of these air horns, right? So obviously, it's nothing to do with the size of the tip. This is your fluid tip, the one that sits right in the center. There we are. So you're pulling the trigger, and you can see that that needle is pulling back from the fluid tip there. Nothing to do with that. That's your fluid tip size, sorry. Yeah, that is your fluid tip. These are your air horns on the side. So fluid tip, air horns. Now, if this was a HVLP spray gun, these holes here would be much bigger. So it's high volume of air, and they say it runs at a lower pressure, but it's, it's a little bit uh, confusing for people who don't fully understand exactly what it means. Um, it's nothing to do with the fluid, it's to do with the air. So high volume, you're actually going to need a higher volume of air to run those spray guns. So people at home, you might just have, I don't know, I'm not like a, a expert on those smaller compressors, but you might just have a smaller compressor that can't actually hold up to a HVLP spray gun. Me, at work, we've got an air screw compressor and that thing will not drop pressure all day, right? So I can run HVLP spray guns at work, but I still don't. I actually don't use HVLP spray guns at work. I Sometimes I do, I could put a HVLP cap on my Developers, if I like, I could use the SATA jet HVLP, but even when getting a SATA jet, I'll always go for the RPs. Um, you know, when I'm getting a Developers, I'll usually go for the Transtech. So they call them Transtech, call them what you will. I call it conventional. Um, I actually believe, technically, if you want to get technical, what conventional is, it's like the old style spray guns, um, which did operate at quite a higher pressure. Um, but here's another one here. I've got the Iwata. Um, what do they call it? They, they've just got these crazy numbers that no one's going to understand. Um, but yeah, if you're going to go get your Iwata, I'd get that air cap, uh, W400 BA4 slash 2. If you wanted to get your Ballaria Classic Plus, now that's not a HVLP spray gun. So HVLPs, because the size of the uh, air horns are much larger, the paint obviously follows the air, you know, because yeah, I'll get the nice gun. Because uh, your paint comes out the center, and then the uh, the amount of air that's flowing out of a HVLP because it's a high volume, it's going to be so much more air. The reason uh, they even exist is because 
they will have a, a greater transfer efficiency. Now, I'm not fully sold that they don't use a great deal less, and that, that is the only reason like they're around because they use a little bit less uh, paint. But I'm not overly convinced that they use that much less than like your Devilbus, uh, Transtech, or even your SATA RPs. You know, I don't find that they use a great deal more. They may use a little bit, but it's it's really you're talking minimal amounts anyway in the right hands. You know, um, so yeah, look. DIYs, don't don't just read HBLP on websites or threads or anything. Um, don't don't buy one. You, honestly, you don't need them. You're going to be getting worse finishes with them because the amount of air that's coming out of those air horns, it's um, it's going to be coming out a lot thicker and chunkier. So unless you unless it's in like a experienced tradesman's hands, um, you're going to be getting worse finishes out of it. I've found that. Um, yeah, like years ago, I used to use HVLPs because, uh, like, the paint manufacturer, they're like, oh, it, there's a Glazerit back in the day in Melbourne. Um, they told our bosses, if all you guys use HVLPs, they're going to be using less paint. Um, and I'm using Standox now. I'm using the Transtech cap, which is a T20 air cap, or my Devilbus. I'm using exactly the same amount. So I've got my calculations per panel. It's 130 mils per panel. It was 130 mils per panel when I was using HVLP too. Um, so I'm not actually using any less. And as I say, like if, if you do, it's gonna be so minimal that it's it's not funny. I do know in certain areas, like in America, probably in Europe too, um, governments have even stepped in and said you have to use HVLP. You know, if you're in a workshop environment, you have to be using HVLP spray guns. So there actually are some guns that aren't available in the US. But um, yeah, just trust me, guys. Don't get yourself a HVLP spray gun unless you are like if you're a tradesman or you're a spray painter and you know you want to try it or you've been told you have to try it. By all means, go for it. You'll be able to suss it out. You know you're painting enough, you're painting often enough that your first couple of jobs might not come out that good, um, but then you'll get the hang of it. You'll get you get you'll figure out that you have to actually hold that gun a lot closer when you're using the HVLP. So it actually. Uh, because you're holding it that little bit closer, the atomization is going to be nicer. Rather than hold, you can hold the gun back a little bit when you're using uh, just your standard spray guns with the smaller air horns. Um, but yeah, look, that's about it. As I said, there is some other videos where I've gone a little bit further into detail. I've got um, LVLP standard and then like your trans tech and then your hvlp i've actually um set up boards inside my spray booth to show you exactly how they do spray differently but this was more just to bring it to the front of people's minds again and remind people uh that if you're at home you really don't want a hvlp spray gun they're going to be putting more strain on your compressor it may not even keep up with it you're going to be getting worse finishes out of it so um, yeah, look, look, for people at home, I've still got a couple of guns that I highly recommend. So you should get yourself FLG-5. They're a killer gun, they're like Devilbus, uh, good build quality. I know everyone's going to be, you know, laughing at me and saying, oh, he's just a Devilbus fanboy, but they just tick all the boxes, you know. Um, started just a great guns. I want to build some great guns too, um, but they just seem to tick all the boxes for me. You can get yourself an FLG-5 for under 200 Australian dollars. What have you got in Sardajet for under 200 bucks? Well, you, you can't get that. that. That gun there, that's like, well, a primer gun anyway. It's got 1.8 mil tip. I think you can get, yeah, you can get them right down to 1.4 mil tips. Um, but, you know, you, it's still double the price of your FLG-5. So why would I, how can I recommend that for someone that's going to possibly use it only three or four times a year? I can't, you know. So if Sada, if Sada had something in that <laughs> price range, sure, I would, you know. So call me a fanboy boy, all you like. I really don't care. I'm, I'm more come from the real world. And I, I understand that, um, yeah, my audience isn't all in the trade. So they, I need to give them the right information and, like, the best advice, you know. I put myself in people's positions when I do recommend guns. I understand that not everyone has um, five to eight hundred dollars to spend on a spray gun, but you know you still want a half decent quality gun, which is yeah. I mean, some people were hating on me about the ten dollars spray gun review I did. The gun is garbage. I stand by that. I will give it another chance. I will actually try and spray a panel. I'm you know happy to take the criticism that I didn't actually give it a very good shot. 
I will give it another shot, but I'm still saying that it, it's not a good spray gun. It, yeah, it was sent out as a bit of a joke anyway. But yeah, um, hopefully you've picked something up out of this video and don't go and buy a spray, uh, HVLP spray gun. <laughs> unless, yeah, unless you're in the trade. Until then, get out there and paint some shit. Gunny out.